she's coming out, she's coming out, she's coming out. It's there. Oh. Hello, and uh, I don't know how long it's been since my last video, and I'm really sorry that it's taken this long. I really have not meant it to take this long for this video, and this isn't even the video I wanted to do. Originally, this was supposed to be about different factions, kind of like StarCraft has Zerg and uh, Protoss, etc. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I didn't have enough time to completely code all of that. Uh, so instead, this is something people have been asking for an extremely long time that I never got around to doing, kept putting off. So this is also a very well-requested thing. Uh, a unit that goes to a resource, keeps collecting until it's done. And I'm both going to show you uh, the logic behind it, as well as finish it off like for you. Uh, it's not completely done because I wanted to kind of show you. I thought I could better show you how it works by editing it. Um, so we take our worker underscore gatherer object, uh, this is the one that basically hits the rocks and automatically goes back to the base, so since half of this is already done, we're just going to start modifying it, and it starts off with a create event, and in the create event, we have heading home equals true, and this is a brand new variable, it's a boolean variable, uh, in my past videos I've been saying boolean, it is in fact boolean um, I was wrong about that, so if you have been copying me and pronouncing it Boolean, it is Boolean instead, and I can all sound intelligent and stuff. Um, selected equals false, and can deposit equals true. Uh, this I knew we were going to need, this is what I'm going to sh edit with you, and can deposit was to fix a minor glitch in the coding, but it wasn't so much the coding as it is the game maker engine. Um, now in the step event, we have if heading underscore home equals true, open bracket. Uh, now this is pretty much the code that we had before. Heading home means you're heading to the base. I just named it heading home because that's I thought it would be a cool name for a variable. If you don't want to use that variable name, just use whatever. If you've watched all my videos by this time, you'll know enough about variables in this code that you don't even need it. Um, MP underscore potential underscore step and in parentheses we have instance underscore nearest in parentheses x comma y comma building underscore main in parentheses dot x. This of course we've used this function before. Uh, it finds the nearest building underscore main dot x and then we have the whole thing again but it's dot y. So we find the coordinates of the nearest object and then we do comma four comma false. Now the comma false means we only only stop for solid objects, we do not stop for all objects. Now we have image underscore angle which is equal to point underscore direction and then in parentheses we have x comma y comma instance underscore nearest in parentheses x comma y comma building underscore main in parentheses dot x same exact function it's the instance underscore nearest but point direction you need the x and y of your object in this case x and y because we do not need the self dot. If you have just a lone x and y, it will infer this object or the parent object, which is itself. So we have x and y. Then we have uh, we find the nearest building underscore main and dot x, and then we find the instance underscore nearest uh, building underscore main dot y, and we point towards it, and we do this every step. So whatever finds a closer uh, rock or uh, base mid-flight, it will change direction just in case. And then we have else if heading home equals false, it's the same exact code except instead of building underscore main, we replace it with rocks. Now instead of heading home, we are heading to the rocks. This guarantees continuous motion and it will go to the closest rocks. This makes it better for the player because it means less frequent trips. It will go to the rocks, grab some more, come back, and just keep going back and forth. Now, if selected equals true, in brackets, image underscore index equals select, and else, image underscore index equals worker. So now we have the selected and non-selected. Now, we did not select this because as of right now, it just goes back and forth and you can't stop it. What I'm going to do is, we are going to have, um, we're going to add this now. Add event mouse uh, let's see we'll do left released if 
selected equals true. Sign is well true. True. Selected equals false. That's all we have to put for this one. Then we have if selected equals false. Selected equals true. One thing you might notice is um, this is circular reasoning. Well, not circular reasoning, but it immediately changed, so we have an else if right here. Because if we had an if, what would happen is we'd go through the code one line at a time, if select equals true, selected equals false, then we'd have if select equals false, select equals true. So at the end of the event, it would be true again. And then we have mouse right released. So what's going to happen is if you right click on it, it's going to change. But we're not going to have instance underscore change. What we're going to have is um, instance underscore create x comma y comma ship underscore worker. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to create the worker. Then we're going to change. Uh, then we're going to make A variable change because we want it selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel an event by right clicking. So we're going to say with instance underscore nearest in parentheses. I think it's x comma y comma ship underscore worker. Uh, in parentheses expected. Oh. My bad. All right. Um, selected equals true. Oh crap! I forget if it's a boolean or not. Then we have with self because we need to bring it back. Instance underscore destroy. I'm going to check that real quick. Um, in create, we have select equals zero, so it is not a boolean. That is my bad. Inconsistent coding. Instead of true, we're going to have one. All right. So what happens now is when we click it, it selects itself. When we right click it, it cancels its event. And now we have the events itself. A collision with building underscore main and a collision with rocks. The great thing about this is it has all of the engine is already in the code. The only editing is in this object. So what we have here is if can deposit equals true, this is the bug. Lives equals lives plus 100. This is in the collision with the building underscore main. Then we have can deposit equals false. The reason why this was happening is it's a solid object. So it would be traveling around to get to the nearest rock if it was on the other side of the building. And that would keep colliding with it, which means live would just be going up and up and up. So sometimes it would give you 200, other times it would give you 1,000, all depending on how, where it was going to the next rock, how long it was staying in contact with the building before it flew away. Then we have speed equals zero. This means it can't go through the object as a fail-safe just in case MP, uh, the motion path algorithm doesn't work. Speed equals zero, which means it won't go through the object. And lastly, we have heading underscore home equals false. We already deposit our ore at the home, the base, etc. Now we have to go back to the rocks. Then when we collide with the rocks, we have speed equals zero. Once again, a fail safe. Heading underscore home equals true, true. So we'll turn right around. And then can deposit equals true. So what this does is it'll, you'll first drive the worker into a rock. It will then collect the ore and go home. It'll hit home turn around and go to the nearest rock, get the ore, turn around and go home, and then go to the nearest rock again, and the nearest rock will probably change, because it won't take 100 steps to go and deliver the ore, which means you'll need a new rock. And it'll just keep going back and forth, and it can only deposit after it visited that new rock. So there's that failsafe, so it won't add like a bunch of random uh, ore, even though you only went once. Then we have with, and then parentheses, other, which when you do a with other, it goes to what you were colliding with. Instance underscore change, and then parentheses rocks underscore empty comma true. So with the rocks that it collided with, it's now changing into rocks empty. We do not need to change the code of the rocks in order to make this work. We only need to touch worker underscore gather. And I'm just going to go quick into the game 
and show you how this works. Alright, so we select our worker, we go ahead and drive it into any of the rocks, and you'll notice that it stops being selected and just goes around and it flies, and it flies around to all the different rocks, and will go to whatever is the closest rock with ore in it. Then if we select it, cancel, it'll now be a worker, a selected worker that we can just fly around. Then if we hit the rocks again, there we are, we're all set. And there we go. So we can cancel, or we can fly into rocks, and uh, so we get our worker back. So you can just have it fly autonomously like this, or we can have it keep, or we can cancel and have it fight somewhere if need be. And just keep going and going and going until you get some more. So uh, works really well. Uh, if you want to do this for a different object, it's really simple. Just uh, change the object a little bit. Instead of rocks, you can put the refinery so it goes to the refinery and back. That makes a lot more sense than the ore to keep going back to a building. Uh, I think that's a little bit better. I'm just not going to show that. So uh, there you have it. First read in a really long time. I'd really like to apologize. Secondly, for those who are having variable problems, uh, just go to Global Game Settings, Errors tab, Global Game Settings is right here. Double click, Errors tab, check this box, treat uninitialized variables as zero. Initializing variables is something you need to do in every programming language. GameMaker makes it easy so you don't have to initialize them, it'll just treat uninitialized ones as zero. Or as soon as you. So in your code, if you don't get it until you need it, like when you need it, it'll be initialized, but not at the very start of the game, it'll have problems. So just treat check that box. In other programming languages you're going to have to initialize it first. It'll just have to be like uh, bool, um, can deposit, and then later on you'll say whether you can or not. So there you have it. Uh, part 32 or 33 or something like that. Next time I really want to get factions up, uh, how to do the different things like that. Maybe we'll even make a zerg if I have enough time for art. Um, but like I said, I've been extremely busy lately. I have a deadline for a project in eight days, I think. Eight days. It was a six-week project. We only had six weeks. It came and we actually had less than six weeks. Uh, deadline's really getting close. I'm getting busier and busier with it. Hopefully it'll all turn out good. And um, another deadline for another big project. Uh, I'm just swamped right now. <laughs> um, but thanks for watching. Um... Sorry I haven't updated in a while, but I will get back to it, especially after February 15th, when the deadline is over, finally. Uh, after that, I'll get to more consistent video making. I'll try to get one up a week again. I was doing that for like a month or two, and then it just all fell apart once I got the assignment thing. So, until then, thanks for watching. Um, please rate, and please comment.